Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. <sighs> so this week I have a lovely, delicious practice to introduce you to. I got introduced to it about two months ago for the first time in a training that I participated in uh, from the exchange group. So exchange is spelled X-C-H-A-N-G-E, exchange. And they teach leaders how to do a better job of helping people connect deeply in the groups that they facilitate. It's wonderful training. And they held a three-day online immersion called ACLE. I think it stood for Awakening Conscious Leadership Experience or something like that. And they taught this, what I'm gonna teach you right now, right here, in that ACLE training. They taught me about the unified mindfulness approach to meditation. Super widespread, super well respected, used by Harvard Medical School and Carnegie Mellon University among tons and tons of other universities as their core mindfulness meditation training that they do research on around the efficacy of mindfulness meditation. The other major uh, form of meditation that I know of that's used in research like that is taught by Monique Rhodes, who we of course have in our Bright Lifers program. We have her mindfulness meditation training. Um, and then there, of course, there's the John Kabat-Zinn work. So there's many approaches to meditation. This is the first time I'd experienced unified mindfulness. And it revolutionized my experience mostly of being able to carry meditation into my moments of living and waking and, and moving through the day. I had never really succeeded, I don't think, as fully as I can now at practicing mindfulness as I live my day, as I wash my dishes, as I drive my kids, you know, uh, hither and yon, as I make my bed, as I sit at the table with my family and just experience moments, I can slip into this form of meditation. You'll see how when I teach it to you right now. It's very, very simple, very easy to learn, very easy to explain. I can't wait to clue you into it. And then you can practice it once or twice and you'll go, oh, this is amazing. Okay, so Unified Mindfulness was created by someone named Shinzen Young. And let me just uh, use Shinzen's words for who he is. So this is how he describes himself. I have this on a piece of paper because this is not easy to memorize. Okay, he says about himself, I am a Jewish American, Buddhist informed mindfulness teacher who got turned on to comparative mysticism by an Irish Catholic priest and who has developed a Burmese Japanese fusion practice inspired by the spirit of quantified science. <laughs> I read that and I was like, oh my God, I love this guy. I love this guy. Raised in Los Angeles, Jewish, and already an unusual soul. By the age of 14, he'd made the decision on his own to go to Japanese school. And he did end up spending three years uh, in Japan studying and living as a Japanese monk. He got a PhD in some sort of uh, Buddhist studies, and he's a mathematician and scientist at heart, which of course, you know, is right up my alley. I just love this guy. And he endeavored to distill mindfulness into its mathematical atomic elements. And he essentially said, when you really look at it, there are three three units of experience. There's what we see, there's what we hear, and there's what we feel. Now, smell and taste would be wrapped up here in feel, right? What you feel, whether it's on your skin or on your tongue or in your nose, it's, it's, a, it's a feel, okay? So see, hear, feel. And then each of those also can be outward, oriented or inward oriented. So let me go through them and explain. So 
a see out, something that you're seeing on the outside would be your eyes are open, you're looking around and you see something. You see a sunset, you see a bird, you see the sink, you see your hand and the veins on it, you see the wall across from where you're sitting, you see, right? Or your eyes are closed and you see patterns of red that might be from the capillaries on the back of your eyelids, right? You can still see out if your eyes are closed. You're just seeing, uh, you know, those shapes and things that, that fall off the, the back of your eyelids. That's see out. See in is when you have an image in your mind, right? Not everybody has these, but about 95% of people see images in their mind's eye. So you might be imagining a scene, you might be remembering something, you might be projecting into the future. Uh, many people can close their eyes and imagine a beach, imagine a sunset, imagine, um, you know, imagine a conversation that they're gonna have with their spouse and they could actually see them sitting there, right? In their mind's eye, that's a see in. So we can see. We can also hear. And hearing out, an outward faced hearing is anything we hear. A sound, even the sound of our own breath, the sound of our stomach grumbling, the sound of a clank or a creak in the house, the sound of someone outside mowing their lawn, the sound of a loud bus going by, right? Hear, out. Or hear in, would be uh, you hear a monologue or a dialogue in your own head because you're having a conversation with someone, imaginary, right? In the future, in the past, remembering or projecting. That's hear in, that's an inward faced hearing. You're hearing in your own mind's ear. And then feeling out would be any of the sensations. Again, whether it's smells or, or a taste on your tongue, or you could feel the feeling of your feet on the floor. You could feel the feeling of your clothes on your skin. You could feel the coldness as you breathe in through your nostrils. You could feel your back hurting. You could feel yeah, anything that you feel that's a physical sensation. An inward feeling is emotional. It's a tightness of anxiety in your belly, your belly up, tied up in knots over an, a wave of anxiety that's in there. You could feel a pressure on the back of your face that's actually tears wanting to come out. You could feel a big empty sadness in your chest cavity. You could feel a lightness and a joy in your heart spreading outward into a smile on your face. Those are inward feelings. Any sort of emotion is an inward feel. Okay, so see, hear, feel. See, hear, feel. Now, what the meditation practice is comprised of is simply meeting the moment with curiosity. It's kind of a relaxing into the moment and then just noticing whatever comes up and then labeling it. So it's two parts, noticing and labeling. So the noticing is you just meet the moment with curiosity and you just notice what captures your attention. And then you label it, see, hear, or feel. Or if you wanna do the fancy version, see out, feel in, here out, here in. Okay, I'm gonna do it right now for, I don't know how long, a minute, you know, a little stretch of time, a tiny stretch of time. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop into a see, hear, feel practice myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my labeling out loud so you can hear it. And then when I stop, I'm gonna go back and explain what was going on in my mind so you can witness a tiny little see, hear, feel practice, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna start. See, out. See, out. Hear, out. Feel, out. 
C out. Feel in. Feel out. Hear out. Hear in. Hear out. See out. Okay. So I may not get all of these perfectly in the right order, but basically what happened is I started the practice and uh, I saw, I'm staring into a camera right now, and I saw the, the color of the, the outfit that I'm wearing reflected in the lens. It cre it's creating a line of like my tan skin and the burgundy jacket. And I saw that line and I just noticed it. I just, oh, there's, a, there's quite a line there in, in the camera lens. So I labeled it, see out. Then I saw the bright red, my eyes flicked up for a second, you may have noticed. I saw the bright red, the camera is rolling light. Um, and I labeled that, see out. Then I just heard the sounds in my room. There, there's hardly anything, but it's not perfectly silent, and it's almost like a faint buzz or just uh, kind of the hum of silence. And I labeled that here, out. And then um, my ankles feel heavy and my feet feel heavy. My feet kind of hurt, and I felt this weight in my ankles, so I labeled that feel out. Uh, at some point after a little bit, I, I laughed and I said, um, here in, and I grinned and laughed. Uh, that was, um, I heard myself say in my head, like, um, kind of like rehearsing what I would say in the vlog next. Like, I wonder if that was weird for you. And I heard myself in my own head say, I wonder if that was weird for you. And so I said, here in, right? That was me imagining saying that. So I said, here, in. Um, yeah, and then I think I kind of just a little bit more of the same. I said, see, out. That was, again, looking at the camera lens. I said, hear, out. That was, again, just hearing the silence in the room. And feel, out. Again, my ankles uh, are feeling kind of heavy and my feet are hurting. So I just said, feel, out. And that was pretty much it. That was pretty much it. That was my experience. So... When I first learned to do this, I got, I don't want to say addicted to it, but I got fascinated by it. I just, I, I enjoyed it so much. It was such a little game. I wonder if there's a little dopamine hit that comes every time you um, successfully label something, right? It's like, oh, I know what that is. Um, yeah, I, I was doing dishes and I would just do it, the see, hear, feel thing. It's so interesting to be pulled into the present moment that completely and successfully. It heightens focus. Meditation increases happiness. So practicing things like this increase happiness. Um, it inc increases clarity of thought, sensory awareness, the ability to be present in the moment. Um, there's a free little online course on this. If you go to unifiedmindfulness.com, there's a free little course you can take like, it's like 10 little videos and um, they'll teach you, you know, how to do it. I mean, it's just a little bit more of what I just did here with you. Um, it's pretty simple. It's pretty fabulous. And I've really been enjoying it. So, you know, I think a lot of what we do in Brightline Eating is finding new ways to engage with the present moment, right? When we stop eating sugar, we stop eating flour, and we limit our eating occasions to just meals, we create all of this space in between meals where life shows up and we're not eating over it. And so what are we doing instead? How are we engaging with the present moment? And mindfulness meditation is a way to make friends with the present moment. It's a way to learn that it's safe, that it's 
soft even, warm, welcoming, comfortable, familiar. And mindfulness meditation increases the pause that gives you agency to choose your response not a reaction, not a knee-jerk putting something in the mouth to stuff down the feeling, to quiet the emotion, but the ability to try something different in that moment and not eat over it, right? We were eating over all kinds of stuff, stuff that was happening in the moment that we didn't want to face, that we didn't want to see. Ah, and mindfulness meditation gives us such a lovely way to interact with the present moment differently, right? Because we need new tools. When we're not using food as our strategy, we need new options. So in this vlog, I offered you one. You can learn more at unifiedmindfulness.com. It's free. I get no kickback for saying that. I have it to be in full transparency. I haven't even watched those 10 videos at unifiedmindfulness.com. I just learned, you know, the quick and dirty version in that uh, exchange training like I said, and now I'm just passing it along to you because it's working for me and I'm loving it. And I think Shinzen Young is awesome, even though I've never met the guy. And all I know about him is, is that little blurb that he explained about himself. But uh, I just think it's coolio. So there you go. If you want to try it, give it a whirl. See, hear, feel. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.